In this video, we want to look at actually calling and or creating policies from C Sharp. So you don't actually have to use an orchestration to deal with the policy, and you don't actually have to use the business rule composer. And we can see that in a couple of the other two F, uh, SDK samples that are available. So if we go back to the SDK here and uh, go up a level to business rules, here you see Hello World 1 and 2. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to run the setup for it. So I'd rather do that from this window. So there's the setup.bat. If you want to see what the setup bat does, probably a good idea. We could just uh, take a look at it here. Notepad. And uh, you see it's going to run the common tools building the solution and then it's gacking it. So it looks like it has succeeded and I hit enter there and now to run it we're going to go to C sharp here so we're going to open the solution So there's basically an entire API in, in uh, .NET for being able to call these methods directly. So first of all, look at what we reference here. We reference the uh, Microsoft Rule Engine like we did before, and then there's a reference to my sample library, which is this little C# -sharp class to show how you can instantiate objects of classes inside of C# -sharp here, inside of the business rule. So here it says create a simple rule. Uh, this would be the if then else if we were to code it in C sharp. It says if my sample business object value is not equal to our XML document ID, then we're going to call the my sample method one and pass it the number five. So let's go take a look at this other my sample class and my sample method. So here's my sample method. We pass it the number five, and then it simply does a console write line saying the so-and-so class sample method executed for object so-and-so uh, with parameter and then it would print the parameter 5. And so here we have a, a simple class, public class, my sample business object and this is the constructor for it. So when we pass the constructor we'll pass it a value of type long which is going to store here in my value. So when it prints here uh, my value to string it's going to be the value we passed on the constructor. Okay, so now create the XML bindings. So we have a binding object here and you have to point to what schema you want to use. So here you're saying we have a sample schema which by the way, okay there was a sample XML file here. Let's take a look at it. See this little file. Well, oh, there's our sample schema. So we don't see the schema. Uh, for some reason, they haven't made it a part of our solution. I don't know why. So if we do show all files here and then find the schema, we, we should be able to do include that in our project along with the sample data file. And now you can open that sample schema. Now this is not a BizTalk project, so it's going to open it with the uh, standard schema editor that comes with Visual Studio. Well, actually it does look like the BizTalk editor. Is this a BizTalk project? Um, one second. Nope, it is a C-sharp project, but for some, whatever reason it is opening the BizTalk editor, probably because we have BizTalk installed here. It's one simple little file with one thing, a number, which is a positive integer. Okay, so now if we go back to the hello world. So what we're doing is binding to that schema, to the root element. Let's shrink our explorer over here. And then we're doing this binding here that binds to the fields in the schema that need to be used in the rule definition. And then the .NET class, creating a .NET class. So we have a class binding 
and here you see the type of we're passing the type of what it is we're building and it's my sample library my sample business object and then it says uh, member bindings to bind to the new properties so we're going to have my value and my sample method so we're defining the method as a new class member and the property as a new class member and then create the if start the if statement basically so we have a logical expression is new not equal so if this is like our left hand side and our right hand side right so if my value is not equal to some user function xfb1 so let's go to the top and find xfb1 okay that was our field binding right there and that was referring to the ID in the schema so sorry now back here so we're still somehow checking my value don't fully get that and then here's the then part so uh, actions is a collection of actions then to that actions we're going to add a specific action called user function method one and here's method one which was saying call my method and pass it this argument list and the argument list has a five in it then we're going to create the rule so we create a new rule called rule one and then we use some date time uh, steps here and now you create the version info it's to demonstrate the use of the policy object and here's your major minor version now you're actually going to create the rule set so a rule set or basically is a policy a policy is a bunch of rules so we create a rule set and then we add rule one which we created here into the rule set and that whole routine then is going to return rule set one so this whole routine here was called uh, static which would be private I guess stare whatever the default is rule set create rule set okay so now we have a save to file method which is going to do the same thing basically that the deploy export wizard did so you remember earlier when we did this uh, deploy utility actually in a different project we were in this one and we deployed to disk or exported you export your policy to disk and then we could view it in XML that's what the save to disk does and remember it's called the BR, BRL business rule language format okay so this routine basically saves that to disk to whatever file name you specify when you pass it here and here's the load from file which is going to basically do the opposite it's going to load that file from disk and put it into memory into a rule we have a cleanup routine which we don't really care about and finally we get down to our main routine so the first thing we're going to do is create a rule set that's that first big method we looked at we're then going to save the file to disk we're then going to load the rule set we're going to create the biztalk rule engine right here engine equals new rule engine and we're going to pass it our rule set then we're going to load an XML document so we say xd1.load and we give it the file name of our sample file and then we're going to say it's strongly typed and we give it the name of our schema then we're going to create facts so here are short-term facts there's going to be an array of four of them so fact zero is our XML document fact number two or subscript one is we scroll over here we're going to create three business objects so this is basically a constructor and we're going to pass the value one two and three so we're creating three instances of that sample class now we have a try catch root here so in case something blows up we'll catch it and write out the error and now we're going to assert the short-term facts so we're going to take these four facts and assert them into the rule engine and then we're going to execute the rule engine then when we're done we just press enter to continue and that's it so the only output we're really going to see from this is right here when we call the sample method so let's give it a run here so I'll just do debug start
and there were, looks like some build errors. It says the file is in use by another process. Okay, so I closed a bunch of my uh, business, uh, my Visual Studios, and I reran. I got it to build successfully. So now we'll do debug start. And you can see it's just displaying as it goes, saving rule set, loading rule set, asserting objects, executing, and then it is now called uh, method number, well, it's called the same method for object 2 and object 3, and both times it passed the parameter 5. So in summary, what this, what this uh, program did, it created a set of business rules all programmatically without using the business rule composer. So how could you use this? You could, uh, if you don't like the business rule composer, you know, this is another way to build your business rules by using this API. So in our next video, what we'll do is we'll use this to our advantage. We will create a C sharp, which will allow us to call a rule within a rule, and that is commonly called policy chaining.